is when you think about passion and, and personality, this next part is equally as important. And it may seem, I, I don't know why, but to me, I think this one probably seemed like the one that you go, well, we could probably leave this out. You just needed that to spell place. No, that's, that's not what this is, okay? <laughs> Availability. And, and I want us to really concentrate on this one because i got to tell you what I think keeps a lot of people away from what God has for them is this one right here. And this is one is about the only one that you have something that you can do about it. And let me tell you something. God can give you all the gifts that he wants. And if you don't get this one right, he might as well not have given them to you because it won't work. <laughs> and I think you'll see why in just a minute. So, okay? So just a little bit about just a little bit about availability. Availability has to do with your priorities. It has to, it has to do with I mean, nobody gets extra time, okay? So one thing we're not talking about is going, well, you need to, you know, just, you know, have, you know, add some more stuff to your list. There's no more time to add. <laughs> so it's not just a time management problem. It's a priority problem. It's saying, hey, how do I make sure I make myself available to do the things that God would have me do? And let's just be honest. If you don't, if I could be very blunt just for a second, if you don't make God's, what, how God's designed you and what God's made you for and God's purpose for your life a priority, you'll never fulfill it. It doesn't happen that way. And anybody that's teaching this mystical stuff that God's going to do something and he's going to zap you and now you're going to do all this crazy stuff and that's how it's going to work, that's not how it works. And it's not how it works in the Bible. And, I, and I'll give you some Bible verses for it. Okay, Here's the first one. Having priorities is 100% biblical. And... Um, and I'll give here. There's several verses here. I want to read the first one to you, and then, well, actually, I'm just going to highlight all of them for you. Okay. Philippians three verse thirteen. It says, "Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it." This is the apostle Paul talking about taking hold of the goal that God had for his life. But here's what he said. But what? How many things does he do? But one thing I do. You can circle that. It's really important. Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press towards a goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Um, I've memorized it, sorry. <laughs> it's a famous verse in the Bible. Why? Because he's saying, hey, that's how you get to be the goal. How many things does he do? I concentrate on one. There's lots of things to do in life, but he concentrated on one. Jesus taught it, seek ye first God's kingdom. I don't know if you remember this verse, but if you go back and read Matthew chapter 6, He's talking about all these things that you worry about. <laughs> and he goes, why are you worried? Why do you worry about your life? Remember when Jesus said that? And they're all like, what do you mean, why are we worried about our life? Of course we're worried about our life. He's like, you need to worry about the one who controls both the body and the soul. And then he goes on to say, but seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. And all these other things will be added to you as well. You see what he's doing? He's prioritizing. He's saying, this is important. He did it with the commandments too, remember? When he said, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And he said it pretty quickly. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't get the relational part right, none of the rest of it will matter. That's what he's saying. 1 Corinthians 9.24, it says, do you, not know, do, do, not, do you not know that in the race runners run, but only one gets the prize? You know what he's saying? Run in such a way that you get the prize. Doesn't mean to compete against people. That's not what he's teaching. <laughs> you know what he's teaching here? He's saying, hey, in fact, he goes on to say it. Do not run like someone that runs aimlessly. You know what that means? A person without priorities. Can I tell you who's going to lose? The person that doesn't aim. I can tell you as a marksman, I'm not a great marksman, but I've done some shooting. And one thing I know about shooting is this. You know who doesn't hit the target? The person that doesn't aim at it. I can guarantee you'll miss the target every time if you don't aim because it takes, it takes intentionality. It does. Now, let me, let me flip that on life. You know who wins in life? The person that prioritizes and aims. If you're running aimlessly and don't know where you're going, can I tell you something? None of this stuff matters. Why are you asking God if you're not planning on prioritizing it? And if you don't prioritize it, nothing will happen. It doesn't happen, okay? And we got to start teaching our kids this same thing. So I'm glad there's some kids here. So <laughs> listen to this. Nothing happens without prioritizing it. Absolutely. It's a fact. 
And I can't, and the reason I say that, and I say it with such passion is some people go, well, don't you think God's going to let me one day somewhere over the rainbow, okay, I'm not lying, God is going to gift me to do this thing. Can I tell you something? No, he's not. He's not. If you're not disciplined with what he's giving you now, everything about scripture, and I mean everything, says if you're not faithful in the small things, he'll never make you master over many. In the parable of the talents, he took from the guy that just had one and gave it to the guy that had ten because the guy didn't prioritize, the guy didn't produce, the guy didn't work. It's a fact. And so he's saying it doesn't just happen, it takes discipline. And part of the thing for spiritual gifting is it takes discipline. And this is the discipline part. You have to organize around your priorities. So I want to give you a couple things. You can tell I'm a little bit passionate about this one. (laughs) But it's because it just about destroyed my life. And I kept waiting for my big chance. Anybody done that? Lotto thinking, somewhere over the rainbow. You know, the grass is greener on the other side. Only because it's over the septic tank. (laughs) You've heard that one? It is, right? It is. Andy Stanley put it this way. He said, direction, not intention, determines destination. That's that's one of the great, that's one of my favorite quotes. It's a fact. Direction, not intention. So many people, I intended to do it. I wanted to do it. But until you put feet to it, it doesn't happen, okay? So here's what I want you to do. you got to evaluate big picture. For, number one, you got to know where you're going. If you want to set priorities, the first thing you got to do is evaluate. What is God calling you to do? If you don't know, that's why you're taking this class. And that's why I applaud you for taking the class. Because at the end of it, hopefully you'll have a better understanding of, well, this is how God's made me. Now I can try some things, okay? Also, equally to evaluate this, what is God not calling me to do? Can I tell you, the list of what he's not calling you to do is bigger than the list that he's calling you to do. And you've got to have, you've got to have the courage that when you know what it is, now you can say no. And that's hard. Because other people are going to say, well, I think you need to do it because it's a good thing to do. Yeah, it is. But it's not the God thing to do. Because <laughs> God wants me to do the one thing I do, not the many things I dabble at or the many things I, I just let take over my life. Okay. <clears throat> and the question we have to ask, if you don't ask this question, you don't deserve to be a leader. I can tell you that. What gives me the greatest return? It's the question he's going to ask in the end. (laughs) If you don't believe it, read the parable of the talents. Remember what he said? You wicked, lazy servant, go out where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. It seems so mean, doesn't it? Because why? Because he expects us to ask this question. What will produce the most? And let me tell you what will produce the most. As you understand your personality and your spiritual gifting and what God has given you, you take that to produce more. Okay? You take that and you put all of your stuff on doing that, and it's absolutely excellent. So, so here's a couple principles for setting priorities. Understand the difference between the urgent thing and the important thing. Now, there's only one way you can do that, and that's if you understand what your priorities are. Now, here's a great leadership lesson. If you don't set your priorities, yeah, Debbie's already said it, somebody else will, Okay? And let me say something. God didn't call you to do somebody else's priorities. Now, we're not talking about yours. We're, we're, we're believing in God. So we're saying God has priorities for your life. That's why you take this class. Now, are you doing those or are you doing some, somebody else's urgent thing? You know, phone call rings. Do I answer it or do I have the conversation with the person in front of me? It's very important, okay? Very important because the urgent thing isn't always the important thing. Now, it's important to them. But just because it's important to somebody else doesn't mean that it should be important to us. And by the way, there's, there's one good part about this. There is a God, and we're not him. Okay? So not every need is a calling. In fact, to do so, you know what that means? you got a God complex. And as long as you got a God complex, he can't use you. Because you think you're going to fix everybody. You can't. You do what God is calling you to do. You cannot overestimate the unimportance of practically everything. Okay? There's so many things in life that are busy. Just because it's active doesn't mean it's producing. And that's why you got to ask the question, where am I going? And then you back it up and you make action steps. And you, and you set the priorities. The good is the enemy of the best. You can't have it all. Too many priorities will paralyze you. Here's what a lot of people do. You know what they do? They go, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just make everything a priority. <laughs> can I laugh with you? <laughs> It doesn't work, okay? But a lot of people do it. We say that, but let me ask you a question. If you pull out your calendar right now, does it look like craziness? Does it have a set direction? (laughs) 
Verse six, number six, it's not enough to, just to know your priorities. You have to organize around them to accomplish them. I'll give you a book that I highly recommend. It's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Um, just so I'm clear, because I've had some people come to me later and tell me Stephen Covey was not a Christian. That's fine. He was a Mormon. Um, but it's not a Mormon book. It's, it's, it's a great principle filled with actually biblical principles um, if, you, if you do away with some of, the, some of the teachings that he has. But it's a great book. It could really help the body of Christ if we would grasp how to overcome the urgent addiction to, to focus on what's important. So, so that's, that's basically that. And now how do we organize it? Now we're going to get very practical, okay? The time we have left, just some very practical tips for you. How to organize around your priorities, okay? John Maxwell put it this way. He said, success is really this is the results of planning. It happens where preparation meets opportunity. <laughs> I remember Abraham Lincoln said that. I don't remember that. I'm sorry, I just read that. <laughs> I'm not that old. Um, Abraham Lincoln said, I will prepare and perhaps my time will come. Can I tell you something? If you don't plan, it won't matter if your moment comes. <laughs> this is huge. And, and I want to I add this one part, and that's this. If you don't invest in you, no one else will. This is so important. And I'll, I'll put it even stronger. If you don't invest in you, no one else should. Because <laughs> a lot of people have this false sense of humility where they're going, well, I don't want to spend that on me. Let me ask you a question. How, how, how hurtful is that to God who said, I designed you, I made you. You need to pour resources into going, I need to make myself the best me I can be to accomplish all that God has called me to do. I think that's so important to what we do. And the first step is organizing around our priorities. Organizing around the priorities that God has given us. So let me give you nine things, and they're all in your notes, so you don't have to write them down. But we'll just go through them real quickly. Number one. Write down your priorities. <laughs> now, i got to tell you, there's a lot of people that tell me, well, yeah, i got priorities. I'm like, let me see them. Well, I don't write them down. All right, write them down. <laughs> By the way, when you write them down, they may start to look really stupid, okay? <laughs> and that's why you write them down, because as a pastor, I've had to learn that the hard way, you know, because we talk about mission statements and vision statements, and the more you say them, we get to say them in public, and then we get criticism for them. You know, like, that's dumb. You know what I mean? <laughs> you misspelled that or whatever. Okay, so you get the idea. Um, <laughs> write down your priorities. Not, not just so they're equally worded. Don't make a whole bunch of them. Maybe take, maybe take 10 priorities and circle the top two. You, you, you don't want to have too many. The top, what is the top priorities in my life? Then I want you to you need to take those priorities, okay? Number two, you got to keep a calendar, okay? You know, you know why, you, why you keep a calendar? Now, we're not talking about a calendar where you just write down your activities. What I mean is a calendar that actually journals everything that you're doing, okay? So whatever you do, it's on your calendar so you know what you're doing. That way you can evaluate. Well, technically what a calendar does, it allows me to evaluate the future. This is where you get real things. Just journaling the past is great. You learn a lot from it, but you learn in hindsight. Nothing you can do about it. If you're focused on the past, let me tell you what that means. <laughs> you're going off the road. In the future. It's, like, it's like texting and driving. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm focused on this, not that. I'm focused on the rearview mirror. Think about a person only drives looking at the rearview mirror. How well does that work? It doesn't. <laughs> so keep a calendar. Now you're looking at future things that you have something to do about. And you're writing those down. Now, number three, here's the most important part of that. Schedule based on your priorities. Your priorities determines what goes on or off your calendar. That's where the rubber meets the road. If you don't do this, there's no possible way you're living by priorities. You know what you're living by? You're living by activities. And the question is, is that what God wants you to do? Because you only have so much time. And one day you'll give an account for the time that you have. And the question is, have you taken the priorities that God has had for you and put those together with your calendar? And now you go, the only thing that goes on my calendar is the priorities that God's given me and nothing else. <laughs> now I got to tell you, if you decide to do that, just be prepared because there might be some people initially that are going to be a little irritated with you. <laughs> when you say, I'm sorry, that's a priority for you. Not me. <laughs> Your life will get worse before it gets better. Trust me on that. 
But when you do this, this is where victories are won. Because, because I got a feeling a lot of people are going, I don't know where I'm going to find time to do that. Yeah, because you're doing a whole bunch of things that have nothing to do with what God is calling you to do. And you're thinking you're going to get there. <laughs> That's called insanity, right? It is. Because why? Because direction, not intention, determines destination. Direction. The direction of my feet. Oh, I love Jesus. Well, I know you do. Now you're ready to put feet to it and prioritize it and actually do it. Well, I don't read my Bible every day. I don't have time. Really? Well, how do you not have time? Because I'm doing other things. Well, you've got to change some of that or else it's not a priority. Now, it doesn't mean you can't do anything for other people. You, you can. You really can. Um, and, and that should be a priority. And if you don't get them all on there, write down a new priority. It's fine. Okay? You get the idea? Number four, allow time for unexpected things. Don't, don't schedule, you know, for those of you that are C personality types, be very careful <laughs> that you're going, well, I mean, you know, now nobody's going to get any more time and I don't care about people. People are important to God, so please make sure you take time for them. Um, number five, organize your workspace. Um, can't over, overestimate that. Number six, work according to your temperament. You know, your morning person, night person, whatever you are. The, your personality is basically what it means. Work according to your temperament. God has made you that way, okay? Number seven, develop systems that work for you. Number eight, always have a plan for dead time. And number nine, focus on results, not just activities. If you want a great book for organizing your life, it's called Getting Things Done by David Allen. Um, you can order that. He's got a whole system. He's got all kinds of things now, all kinds of seminars on just how to file, how to get your life in order, how to make sure you're doing your top priorities. It's absolutely awesome. I can't imagine what would happen if the body of Christ were to organize around their priorities. It could be amazing. We probably could do so much for the kingdom of God if we did. If we don't, we'll be spinning our wheels, and that's where Satan wants us at. Final thing is this. Be faithful in the small things. Whoever, whoever can be trusted in the very little things can be trusted in very much. Whoever is dishonest with very little can also be uh, dishonest with very much. What I'll, what I'll take a moment to say is this is just a lot of people are going, when the big moment comes, then I'll step up. And God is saying, I think you're missing the point. That most of <clears throat> what counts for all of eternity may not be the big moments you're thinking of. I've learned that the hard way of my life. What makes the most difference in somebody's life is not what we applaud. It's not what's on stage. It's not the big moment that we think it is. It's the things that no one else knows about. It's the things that we didn't even think were important. But because we were faithful in those, somebody's life was changed for all of eternity. And that is why I say be careful. Don't ever think. And by the way, that's a good rule of thumb when you work with people. If they're not faithful in the small things, what are you doing letting them do something else? Well, you know, they weren't really good at that. But when it comes for the big moment, they will be. No, they won't. No, they won't. This is a great principle for employment. Um, so keep that in mind and, and pray about that one. Um, spend some time and think about, if this is what God has called me to do, if you don't know what it is, figure it out so you know what your priorities are. If you know what it is, organize around those priorities. If you're not going to organize around them, just be honest. I remember David Allen said this in Getting Things Done. He said, if you're not, not going to take an action step on your to-do list, take it off because you're never going to do it. <laughs> That's tough, isn't it? But it's so true. And when you do this, the reason why I'm so passionate about it isn't to throw guilt at you. It's to say, you can accomplish the things that God has for you to do in this lifetime. And it's absolutely amazing. So I'm going to pray over you guys. And if you got any questions, let me know. For homework, um, just so you make sure you're prepared for next week, take the passion ass assessment, which is on page 15 through 20. And then there's a spiritual gift assessment on page 24 through 31. I know that sounds like a lot. It's not as much as you might think, or maybe it's more. I don't know. But, <laughs> but do that. Come back next week. We'll evaluate that. And then we're going to talk about some spiritual gifts. So, so let's close in prayer. I thank you guys so much for your time tonight. This was awesome. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, so let's pray. Father God, we come before you tonight. I thank you so much for each person that took this class. And I just pray, Lord, that not from me or not from my opinions on this or or my viewpoints, but, but from your word and God, from the power of the Holy Spirit of God who desires to gift us and has gifted us in so many ways. I pray, Lord, that we can understand it. I pray we can understand each other and work in unity. And I pray, Lord, that, that we can organize around those things and we can discipline ourselves to do what you've called us to do 
that we might accomplish your mission, which is far better than anything we can dream or think or ask. And I pray for the empowerment of each person here, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you guys. We got snacks, so please take